Hey guys, what's up? Today I want to share with you the story of how I got my internship and I got to spend four months living in Mexico and what I've learned along the way. Ah, the beach always reminds me of my times in Mexico. Nah, that's bullshit. I just have a lazy day with no meetings today, so I thought I'll hit the beach and tell you about the story of my time in Mexico. For my first year at design school, I've always used to fantasize about a summer internship. I had this fantasy about working in a different country with super talented people doing amazing work and how fun it would be and how much I would learn and it would be like an exotic experience. And for, for three years, usually you go for an internship at the end of your third year, just before your final year. For three years, I was you know, bookmarking and collecting the studios that I loved so much, trying to fantasize where I would go to internship. When third year arrived, I hoped that my school had some program to help me you know, get accepted to an internship. We live in Israel, so it's not that simple to work abroad. You usually need visa and have somebody pay for you, so it's not that easy. And I thought that my school would help me out, but it turned out that the school was doing some kind of a contest and had only one internship position for the whole school and for a pretty lame company. So I was really disappointed and I understood that if I really want to make that internship happen, I have to do it on my own. It turns out that finding an internship on your own is not that easier, you know, it's even a bigger competition. So now I want to share with you exactly the whole process I went through, the emails I wrote, the portfolio I've sent, everything I had to do to find an internship. So this is the actual email I wrote. Uh, my name is Ron, I'm a third year design student at Shankar College, I'm looking for a summer internship before my final year and I would like to work at, this one is for example, moving brands. Uh, I'm truly passionate about design. I love the work you're doing and I would love to have a chance to work with you guys. Um, attaching my portfolio, it would be great if you'd have a look and consider. And here's the portfolio I've sent. I started out with kind of a cover letter saying, my name is Ron Segal, I'm 27, working hard to become a great graphic designer passion about life, design, people, and making the world a better place. So if you uh, took the marketing class or heard other places where I talk, I think it's really important, you know, starting with some kind of a mission statement or trying to talk about yourself, how you're different and what you're trying to achieve. So that was my approach to that. Um, of course, the portfolio at this stage was kind of like um, schoolwork mainly, so kind of few branding projects, magazine work, some print design, uh, logotype, this is in Hebrew of course, and at the end my CV, and ended up with a joke, try me, now at internship rates for a limited time only. Now check this out, this is the email thread, check out how many emails I have sent. I've when I, when I just started the process, I had around like 30 studios that I was really passionate about working with and I started emailing them. And at this point, it was really frustrating. And <laughs> let me show you the, the, the doc I was working with. This is the doc I was uh, like managing the process, studio, location, job type. When did I send them? Now check out the answer. If there's no answer, then they didn't even bother answering me. No, no, not good, send again, not, didn't answer, not good, da da da, no vacancy, fully booked, no place, no internship, no place, no need, no. Anyway, as you can see, this can be really, really frustrating and it took a lot of, I don't know, guts or you know grit to just keep on doing it after I finished the 30 studios and I didn't have a positive response to just all right go again and look for other 30 studios that are amazing and you want to work at 
and keep emailing them even though people tell you that you're not good enough and you know I, I really tried the best studios in the world I didn't just put crappy studios I wanted to work with the best so obviously the best people want to intern there and it's really really hard competition eventually after I sent 62 internship requests I had two studios uh, accept me. Woo! I got accepted to two studios. One of them was in the Netherlands and one of them was in Mexico and I choose to go with the Mexican one. It's a studio called Futura. They're super talented. They're doing great branding and identity work and print work. And we figured out a deal. They actually paid me. I took a little apartment there next to the studio and was working there for four months. It was, yeah, I guess it was really everything I've expected. It was exotic. I learned a new language. Uh, I worked with people who were much better than me. Now, it, it's all good and fun, but it's also very hard. You know, it was very, very frustrating to, first of all, work in a foreign language um, that you don't know. It's not like working in English for me. Uh, working with people who are much better than you when I was a student kind of gave me a feeling like I'm not good enough, but when I look at it now, it's like growing pains, <laughs> you know? You, when, every time you're growing and learning new stuff, it's painful. But what, when you were there, when I was there, I was, you know, pretty alone. My girlfriend was uh, in Israel, so it was a fun and tough period for me, but I really think it was totally worth it. Now, the key takeaway or the things that I learned the most from this whole process was actually not even in the internship. It's how I got the internship because that feeling of not giving up, even though I wasn't accepted after sending like 60 emails and continuing until I finally made it, actually taught me to never give up and that turned me into a believer of you know the large numbers. If you didn't uh, succeed yet, you didn't try enough times. And if I didn't, if you don't succeed the first time, try 10 more times. If you don't succeed after 10 times, 10, try 50 times. I succeeded after 62 times. That's great. If, it wa if I wouldn't succeed, I hope I had the, you know, uh, passion and power to keep on trying. But I've learned that sometimes it takes a lot of tries until you succeed. And in the end, it's worth it. So never give up. All right, this week is now officially over. I'm celebrating with a piece of chocolate and a cup of coffee. And I'll catch you guys next week.